क्लास ट्वेल्व कॉमर्स अकाउंटेंसी नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड माई सेल्फ किशोर चौहान आई वेलकम टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट ऑन माई यूट्यूब चैनल गुरु ऑफ अकाउंटेंसी डियर स्टूडेंट यू मस्ट हैव स्टार्टेड प्रिपरेशन फॉर योर कमिंग बोर्ड एग्जाम ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन नाउ टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल लर्न वट इज कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट वट आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ प्रिपेयरिंग कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट वट आर द बेनिफिट ऑफ कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट कैश फ्लो दैट मीन्स हाउ टू प्रिपेयर कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट students you all know there are two financial statement one is position statement and second is income statement position statement means balance sheet it gives information about the assets and liabilities of business at the end of the year whereas income statement that means the statement of profit and loss it gives information about the financial result that means profit or loss of a business but there is one more statement and that is cash flow statement this cash flow statement gives information about inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalents so in this chapter we will learn how to prepare cash flow statement you all know balance sheet and statement of profit and loss do not provide information about inflow and outflow of cash during an accounting period because they are prepared particularly statement of profit and loss is prepared on accrual basis and in accrual basis we record not only the cash received and cash paid but we also record outstanding prepaid and many more things so they do not provide the exact amount of cash inflow and cash outflow so we have to learn cash flow statement because it gives information about the inflows and outflow of cash and cash equivalent during an accounting period this statement is prepared to know the sources and uses of cash and cash equivalents over a period of time from various activities of an enterprise there are three types of activities namely operating activities investing activities and financing activities in this chapter we will learn cash flow from all these three activities dear student cash flow statement is prepared as per the revised accounting standard 3 we will follow revised accounting standard 3 in the preparation of cash flow statement and it provides information about the changes in cash and cash equivalents of an enterprise by classifying cash flows into operating activities investing activities and financing activities cash flow statement is prepared on cash basis because here we consider actual cash inflows and actual cash outflows from different activities of an organization now let us begin this first of all what is cash flow statement what do you mean by cash flow statement so as i showed you said you a statement showing the cash flows that is inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalent during the period is known as cash flow statement so it is a statement and it shows inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents now what is this cash and cash equivalent that we will learn in this session only later on now what are the objectives of preparing cash flow statement so this we have already discussed the first objective of preparing cash flow statement is to find out sources of cash and cash equivalent that means from where a business house receives cash from where it collects cash and cash equivalents and second to determine the applications and uses of cash and cash equivalent that means where the cash of the business has been utilized that is outflow of cash and the third objective is to determine the net changes in the cash and cash equivalent during an accounting year year from all the three activities that means what amount of cash is received and what amount of cash we have paid the difference of that these two that is the net change in the cash and cash equivalent so these are the three main objectives of preparing cash flow statement it can be asked in exam for one mark they can ask you what do you mean by cash flow statement so you can write this definition they can ask you what are the objectives of cash flow statement so you can write this sources of cash and cash equivalent 
applications of case and case equivalent and net changes in case and case equivalents now what are the benefits of preparing cash flow statement so the first benefit of preparing cash flow statement is it provides information to evaluate changes in a net asset of an enterprise net asset means assets minus liabilities so what are the changes what changes has taken what change has taken place in the assets and liabilities that can be known from the cash flow statement it helps to assess the liquidity and solvency of business that means short term debt paying capacity and long term debt paying capacity which is known as liquidity and solvency that can be known from the cash flow statement and it helps to assess the financial structure that means the mixture of debt and equity of an organization that means we can come to know what is the total amount of debt and total amount of ownership fund that is equity is available in the business organization and what change has taken place in that it helps in assessing the ability of the enterprise to generate cash and cash equivalent and it also helps in balancing the cash inflows and cash outflow in a changing condition that means it is useful in proper cash management of an organization and the last is it helps in comparing inflows and outflows of cash we can compare inflow of cash and outflow of cash and management can take important decisions from that so these are the objectives sorry these are the benefits of cash flow statement now here we will learn some important terms used in this chapter understanding of these terms is very useful for you first of all we have to understand what is cash so in this chapter cash means cash on hand and demand deposit with bank these two things are known as cash now we are learning from the practical point of view theoretical portion is over in the beginning now practical point of view cash means cash on hand and demand deposit with bank that means bank balance is also known as cash important word what is cash equivalents so cash equivalent means short term highly liquid investment that are readily convertible into non amount of cash and which are subject to an insignificant risk of change in value so those investment which are made for short purpose short period of time that means for a period of less than 3 month and which are highly liquid that means they can be easily converted into cash so those short term highly liquid investment which are readily convertible into the non amount of cash and cash equivalent are known as cash equivalent so if you have made any short term investment for a period of 3 month in a marketable securities so that can be sold and it can be easily converted into cash so that is a cash equivalent some examples of cash equivalents are given cash equivalents include current investment that means investment in the marketable securities treasury bill commercial papers short term deposits in a bank preference shares if redeemable within 3 month and having insignificant risk of change in value so this is a cash equivalent you have to simply remember they are short term and highly liquid investment which can be easily convertible into cash our next accounting term is cash flow what is cash flow so cash flow means the inflows and outflow of cash and cash equivalents in this chapter the meaning of cash flow means cash inflows and cash outflows not only of cash but also of cash equivalents now we know what is cash and we also know what is cash equivalent okay receipt of cash from non cash items is termed as cash inflow while cash payment in respect of such item is known as cash outflow now what is non cash item so see the example purchase of machinery by by paying cash is cash outflow we have purchased machinery and we paid cash so this is a cash outflow while sale proceed received from the sale of machinery is cash inflow when machinery is sold we receive cash we receive either cash or we receive check so that is cash inflow 
So cash flow means inflow and outflow, cash and cash equivalent. This is a simple meaning. One important point here, cash flow exclude movement between items that constitute cash or cash equivalent. So all those transactions in which cash and cash equivalents are included, there is a movement between the cash and cash equivalent. They are ignored here. Say for example, cash withdrawn from bank. So we know cash and bank, both are covered in the meaning of cash. Bank balance as well as cash balance, both are covered in the meaning of cash. So here, when we withdraw from the bank, so there is no flow because cash withdrawn from bank is flow from one cash to another cash. So cash flow exclude movement between the items that constitute cash and cash equivalent. So those items which are considered as cash and cash equivalent, movement among them is ignored here because there would be no inflow and no outflow. Similarly, cash deposited into the bank, here also there is no flow because it is a movement between the cash and cash equivalent, like that sell and purchase of marketable securities, because marketable security is a cash equivalent. So you have to keep in mind, movement among the items of cash and cash equivalent is not considered here, because there would be no inflow, no outflow. Here we will consider only the non-cash item. So for example, purchase of machinery, sale of machinery, issue of debentures, issue of sales, etc. So this is all about cash flow. Simple meaning of cash flow, inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalents. Now in this chapter, we have to study three types of activities and we will find out cash flow from all those three activities. The first activity is operating activity. Now what is operating activities? So operating activities are the principal revenue producing activities of the enterprise and other activities that are not investing or financing activities. So all those activities which help to generate revenue, principal revenue producing activity, they are known as operating activity. That means the main business uh, earning activity. Some examples are given so that you can better understand what is operating activities. For a trading company, buying and selling of goods is a principal revenue producing activity because its main business is trading business, buying and selling. So buying of goods and selling of goods is considered as operating activity. Similarly, for a garment manufacturing company, operating activities include purchase of raw material, payment of manufacturing expense, sale of garments, etc. So manufacturing of garment is the main business. So all the activities related with that are known as principal, that means operating activities, are known as principal revenue producing activities. For a financing company, whose main business is giving loan and taking loan and buying and selling of securities. So for them, giving loan and taking loans, purchase and sale of securities are considered as principal revenue producing activities. So for a different organization, principal revenue producing activities may be different. See, for a trading company, taking a loan is not a principal revenue producing activity because it is not its main business. But for a financing company, giving loan and taking loan is the main business. So it is a principal revenue producing activity. So principal revenue producing activity means the main business activity from that from which business earns revenue. So this is about operating activities. We will find cash flow from operating activities in this chapter that we will learn later on. Second activity is investing activity. Investing activities means purchase and sale of long-term assets and long-term investment. So investing activities are the acquisition and disposal. That means purchase and sale of long-term assets and other investment. That means long-term investment not included in cash equivalent. You know, in cash equivalent also we take the investment, but they are current investment, short-term investment. So they are not included here. Here we consider only the long-term investment. So investing activities relate to the purchase and sale of long-term assets or fixed assets like purchase of machinery, sale of machinery, 
purchase of furniture, sale of furniture, land and building, etc. Transaction relating to long term investment are also investing activity. So examples are given here: purchase of machinery, sale of machinery, purchase and sale of long term investment. All these are the investing activity because we have invested our money in these long term assets and long term investment. So these activities are different than the operating activity. Operating activities are the main income earning, revenue producing activity. Whereas these are the investment in the long term assets and long term investments. Third activity is the financing activities. See, all business require fund to run it properly. So all companies are issuing shares and debentures. So cash received by issuing shares and debenture is a financing activity. Once the debentures are issued. they are redeem after few years after 5 or 10 years company has to redeem the amount of debenture so that redemption of debenture is a financing activity so activities re related to collection of fund and repayment of fund is known as financing activity see the meaning financing activities are the activities that result in change in the size and composition of the owner's capital including preference share and equity share and borrowing of the enterprise so it mainly concerned with the equity share preference share and debenture and long term loans taken financing activities relate to long term fund or capital of enterprise some of the examples are given cash proceed from issue of equity share so here cash inflow is from financing activity likewise cash proceed from the issue of equity share debentures and raising long term bank loan so here cash comes in the business but that is not from the routine business not from the investing but it is from the market we have borrowed or we have taken from the public so it is a financing activity thereafter repayment of bank loan interest paid on borrowing redemption of debenture all these are the financing activity so till now we have covered three activities operating activity that means principal revenue producing activities then investing activities that means purchase and sale of long term assets and investment and financing activity that means issue of shares and debentures that means change in the owner's fund and borrowed fund that is the financing activities some of the examples are given for your understanding examples of cash flow from operating activities so as i said your operating activity means main business activity so inflow from operating activities cash received from the sale of goods and rendering of services cash received from royalties fees commission and other revenue so all these are the cash inflow from operating activity similarly examples of outflows are also given cash payment to supplier for goods and service you have purchased goods so you will pay money to the supplier so that is cash outflow but that is from operating activity because it is our routine business cash payment to and on behalf of employees salary paid wages paid etc are the routine work so they are operating activity they are the cash outflow in this chapter you have to think whether cash comes in the business or cash goes out and second you have to think it is of operating activity or investing activity or financing activity and accordingly we will solve the exercise there after cash payment to an insurance enterprise for premium and claim that means insurance premium paid and cash payment of income tax that means income tax paid so these are the examples of inflows and outflows of operating activities there are other examples of investing activities are given we know investing activities means purchase and sale of fixed assets long term assets and long term investment now when you make investment you receive either interest or dividend so keep in mind when we make investment in other companies suppose i have invested in other companies debenture so i will receive interest so that is inflow from investing activity 
if one company has invested in another company's equity share or preference share so it will receive dividend so dividend received is inflow from investing activity so inflows are given cash received from disposal of fixed assets including intangible assets that means cash received from sale of fixed assets cash received from the repayment of advances or loans made to third party that means company has given loans in advances and it received it back so cash received from the repayment of advances or loans made to third parties so that is investing activities company gave loan to third person and that third person returned loan to us so that is received then cash received from disposal of shares warrants or debt instrument of other enterprise very important of other enterprise except those held for trading purpose so when you have invested in another company's shares and debentures and then after when you sell it so you receive cash so cash received from the sale of shares and debentures and other instrument of other company so that is our long term investment sold cash received from the sale of long term investment it is inflow from investing activities now once we make investment in another companies we receive interest so interest received we also receive dividends so dividend received all these are inflow from investing activities what are the outflows what are the examples of outflows so when outflow will take place when we purchase fixed asset so cash payment to acquire fixed assets including intangible assets and capitalized research and development work then cash payment to acquire shares warrants or debt instrument of another company that means one company is purchasing shares and debentures of another company that means it is making long term investment in another company so it is a investment activity we are buying the shares and debentures of other company so there is our investment so it is a outflow of cash from investing activity then cash and cash advances and loans made to third party that means loans and advances given to third party so it is also our one type of investment so these are the examples of investing activities some of the examples of financing activity as we all know in financing activities we take cash flow and cash outflow from the issue of shares and debentures the repayment of loans and redemption of debentures all this it is mainly concerned with the owners fund and borrowed fund so inflows are given here example cash proceed from the issuing share that means company issued shares and debentures and preference shares and it received cash from the public so it is a cash inflow from financing activity similarly cash outflows are given cash repayment of amount borrowed once you borrow money you have to repay so say for example bank loan taken after few years we have to repay bank loan so repayment of bank loan is a cash outflow from financing activity okay now we have borrowed money so we have to pay interest we have borrowed money by taking a bank loan or by issuing a debenture so on that company has to pay interest so interest paid on borrowing and long term loans is considered as cash outflow from financing activities similarly company has issued equity shares and preference shares so company will pay dividend on its own equity shares and preference shares so that dividend paid is a cash outflow from financing activity so you have to keep in mind these are the examples now how we will prepare cash flow statement so here simple format of cash flow statement is given for preparing cash flow statement you have to take cash flow from operating activities cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities that means we will take the net difference of inflows and outflows of all these three activities total of these three is known as net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent if it is minus then it is decrease 
but if it is plus answer then it is known as net increase in cash and cash equivalent in that we will add opening cash and cash equivalent so our final answer would be closing cash and cash equivalent so this is a simple format of cash flow statement is given here in detail we will learn in this session only now let us see the format of cash flow statement in detail cash flow statement is prepared in two way that means there are two methods one is direct method and second is indirect method here we have taken the indirect method direct method is not in syllabus in cbsc so we have not taken it we are trying to understand cash flow statement by indirect method and as i told you cash flow statement is prepared as per the accounting standard 3 revised accounting standard 3 so this is also your one mark mcq question that we follow revised accounting standard 3 in the preparation of cash flow statement okay this statement is divided into the three parts first you can see cash flow from operating activities then cash flow from investing activities and then cash flow from financing activities we will see all the items in detail let us begin first cash flow from operating activities okay it begins with the net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary items and for that you have to do the separate working how to find net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary item that we are going to see later on in this session only but it begins with this in that you have to add all the deductions made in the profit and loss account of non cash item such as depreciation goodwill return of patent return of trademark return of underwriting commission and share issue expenses return of etc all these items we have to add back in this once again these are the items which we have debited to the statement of profit and loss that means in profit and loss account they are written on the debit side we will add them back now the question is why to add them back see depreciation goodwill return of patent return of trademark return of underwriting commission and share issue expense return of all these are and specifically depreciation goodwill patent trademark return of these are the non cash expense actually we have not paid any cash it is only an accounting effect when we write depreciation we do not pay the amount of depreciation to anyone it is only an accounting entry so there is no cash outflow we are adding them back because of this reason then after we have to also add all those items which are deducted in the statement of profit and loss that means profit and loss account of non operating item such as interest on bank overdraft cash credit short term and long term borrowing and debentures loss on sale of fixed assets etc now the question is why to add them back because they are the non operating item and right now we are finding the operating activity cash flow from the operating activity so they will be added back because we have debited them in the profit and loss account so we will add back so we will come to our original place we have to minus all those uh, things all those income which we have written in the profit and loss account credit side of non operating nature such as interest received rent received dividend received profit on sale of fixed assets etc now the question is why to minus them because they are of non operating nature they will go either in investing activity or financing activity they will not come here because right now we are finding operating activity so dear student remember all the operating items will come here and all non operating item we will cancel which we have already debited or credited in the profit and loss account after doing this you will get operating profit before working capital change in this 
operating profit working capital change in that you have to add increase in current liabilities say for example creditors you have to compare previous year with the current year and you have to see whether there is increase or decrease so if any current liability has increased you will add decrease in current asset if any current asset has decreased you will add this rule you have to remember you will be given the balance sheet showing the opening and closing balance so we have to compare opening and closing current liabilities and current assets and we will see increase or decrease if current liabilities increase we add if current liabilities decrease we minus you can see less if current asset decrease we add but if the current asset increase we minus so this is working capital changes you have to remember this four item then you will get cash flow from operating activities before tax and extraordinary items from this you have to minus income tax paid and that is net of refund income tax refund and if any extraordinary item is given that will be either added or subtracted so finally you will get cash flow from operating activity if the answer is positive you will write cash flow from but if the answer is negative you will write cash used in operating activities so this is all about operating activities this format you have to remember it is a very simple if you will try to understand it practically then it is very easy statement nothing is hard first point is you have to find net profit or loss before tax in extraordinary item that we will do in working then we have to add all those items non cash items which we have debited in the profit and loss account then we have to add all those non cash expenses which we have debited and we have to minus all the non operating income so you will get operating profit before working capital change in that you have to add increase in current liability and decrease in current asset and you have to minus increase in current asset and decrease in current liability so you will get cash flow from operating activities before tax in extraordinary item from that you have to minus income tax paid during the current year and it is net of refund if any extraordinary item is given that will be taken otherwise it is it will not come there so finally your answer will be cash flow from operating activity this answer may be positive or negative plus or minus depending upon that you will use the word if it is positive cash flow from but if it is minus then you will write cash used in operating activity this is little bit difficult but not hard you can easily do it now b point cash flow from investing activities we all know in investing activities we take purchase and sell of fixed assets long term assets and long term investment so it is a very simple if there is inflow we will add if there is outflow we will minus so first point is given cash received from the disposal of fixed assets including intangible that is sale of fixed assets plus minus cash payment to acquire fixed assets like including intangible that means purchase of fixed assets minus because there would be cash outflow when you sell asset cash comes in so plus when you purchase any asset cash goes out so minus then cash received from repayment of advances or loan made to third party that means we have given loan to third party and they gave it back so it is inflow for us so added then cash payment to acquire shares warrant debt instrument of other enterprise that means we have made investment in the shares and debentures of another company so our cash goes out so minus cash outflow then cash received from disposal of shares warrant debt instrument that means we sold out investment of another company we invested money in the another company share and debenture now we are selling it so when we sell it we receive cash so it is cash inflow so it is cash received from the sale of shares and debentures of another company 
then minus cash advance and loans made to third party that means loans and advances is given to third party now here we have invested money so definitely we will receive interest and dividend so interest received and dividend received from this investment will be added here if rent is received then it is also added here now you see here this rent received dividend received interest received they will come in investing activities and that's why we have not considered in operating activity they were debited in the profit and loss account so what we did we added them back there to get the exit amount so finally here you will get cash flow from investing activity now this answer may be also positive or negative here also there are chances of extraordinary item maybe plus maybe minus that will come later on so this is a simple only you have to remember if any long term asset and investment is purchased then you will put in minus but if any long term asset and investment is sold you will put in plus that is a simple thing and two three point extra interest received dividend received and rent received will be added here last cash flow from financing activity you all know in financing activity we take the amount borrowed from debenture and bank loan and we take owners capital so here all those transactions will come which change the capital of the company or borrowing of the company so you can see cash proceed from issuing equity share so that will be added because company receives cash cash inflow cash proceed from issuing debentures loans bonds and long term borrowing so these items are added because company has received cash there is a cash inflow then after cash payment of amount borrowed like repayment of loan redemption of debenture so here cash goes out there is outflow of cash so minus redemption of preference share outflow of cash minus payment of share issue expense and underwriting commission will come here this is a financing activity so minus interest paid on debenture and long term loans and advances these are the shares and debentures of our company so if we have issued debenture then definitely we have to pay interest to our debenture holder so if interest is paid to debenture holder so it will be cash outflow then interim dividend and final dividend paid to equity share and preference share it is also outflow from financing activity payment for the buyback of shares as extraordinary item so one example of extraordinary item is given company buy its own share that is payment for the buyback of shares so after plus and minus you will get cash flow used or find cash flow from financing activity here also possibility are there plus or minus answer then after what you will do you will make the total of all these three final answer that answer may be positive may be negative if it is positive you will write net increase in cash and cash equivalent but if the answer is negative you will write net decrease in cash and cash equivalent in that you have to add opening cash and cash equivalent which will be ready made given in the question so your final answer would be closing cash and cash equivalent that is also ready made given in the question in this chapter you can easily find out whether you are correct or not in the examination hall only because this opening and closing cash equivalent are ready made given in the example so this is all about format of cash flow statement this is a simple format first three activities we took in detail okay now you all know our cash flow statement starts with the net profit before tax and extraordinary item so now let us understand how to find it how to find net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary item so dear student you will be given balance sheet in that previous year amount and current year amount would be given that means all the items for the previous year and all the items for the current year two columns would be given in the balance sheet from that we can find this thing how to find this so first of all you have to take surplus that is balance in the statement of profit and loss of current year from that you have to minus 
balance in the statement of profit and loss of previous year it is a surplus so from closing balance closing means current year opening means previous year so from closing you have to minus opening you will get the net difference in that you have to add any amount transferred to general reserve interim dividend paid during the year proposed dividend paid during the year and which is of previous year remember proposed dividend of previous year we have to add here because it was proposed in previous year so it must be paid in the current year in the same year company do not pay dividend for example it is proposed in the 2019-20 then it will be paid in the 2020-21 so when we are taking current year so you have to here add proposed dividend of previous year because in current year we must have paid dividend of the previous year proposed then provision for tax of the current year you will add here from that you have to minus if refund of tax is given so finally you will get net profit or loss before tax then extraordinary item this is your beginning from this your cash flow statement will begin you can see the so first point is net profit or loss net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary item this is your starting point for that you have to do this separate working right now we are learning how to do this working so it is very simple closing surplus minus opening surplus in that you have to add transfer to reserve plus interim dividend of the current year proposed dividend of the previous year and provision for tax of current year minus refund of tax if given you will take it finally you will get net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary items now we are learning treatment of some extraordinary item in cash flow statement you have to take care of some important item first extraordinary item so extraordinary items may be income may be expense and they are not of routine nature in exceptional case they take place so while preparing cash flow statement if any extraordinary item is given accordingly we have to deal so extraordinary items are income and expenses that arise from transactions in event distinct from ordinary business activity they are different from the our ordinary business activity and they are non recurring in nature that means they are not uh, happening daily basis they may happen sometime so cash flow associated with extraordinary items should be classified and disclosed separately as arising from operating or investing or financing activity wherever it is applicable we will write it it may be income it may be expense some examples are given for your understanding payment to employees under voluntary retirement scheme so see this is a extraordinary payment we have made it will go in the operating activity but it is not routine so at last in operating activity we will minus it payment to employees under vrs similarly loss due to theft or earthquake or flood so loss not uh, loss do not happen daily because of earthquake and flood and theft it is exceptional so this is extraordinary item then insurance claim received if we have file a case and if the claim amount is received so this is not the extraordinary income sorry this is not the routine income it is the exceptional income we have won the case and we received the insurance insurance claim so we will write at a particular place so if in the question extraordinary items are given it may be income it may be expense if it is income you will add if it is expense you will minus maybe in operating activity maybe in financing or investing wherever it is applicable we will take it important point interest and dividend you all know interest and dividend may be received may be paid now there are two types of enterprise one is financial enterprise and one is non financial enterprise financial enterprise means those enterprise whose main business is lending and borrowing and non financial enterprise means trading organizations manufacturing organizations they are the non financial enterprise most of the exercise would be on the non financial enterprise 
So first we are taking non-financial enterprise. So payment of interest and dividend are classified as financing activity for a trading organization and manufacturing organization. That means non-financial enterprise whose main business is not giving loan and taking loan. If they pay any interest, if they pay any dividend, then it will go in financing activity. And if they receive any interest and receive any dividend, then it will go in investing activity. So we, we, are, we are preparing cash flow statement for non-financial enterprise right now. But for a financial enterprise, its treatment is different because their main business is buying, sorry, main business is lending and borrowing of money. So if they have paid interest, if they have received interest received and dividend is received, then it is classified as operating activity because it is their routine business. They have borrowed money. So they have to pay interest. It is the routine business. They have invested somewhere. So they will receive interest. They may receive dividend. So that is their operating activity, routine business. That's why it will go in operating activity. Interest and dividend paid is a financing activity. Remember, interest and dividend paid is a financing activity for all the enterprise, maybe financial, or non-financial. But when the question is of interest received and dividend received, then treatment will differ. Interest received and dividend received for a non-financial enterprise is an investing activity. But the same is operating activity for a financial enterprise. So here you have to take it care. In one mark MCQ, they can ask you this. Most of our exercise would be on the non-financial enterprise. Taxes on income and gains. So tax may be income tax on our normal profit. It may be capital gain tax on our capital profit. It may be dividend tax on the amount of dividend distributed. So accounting standard three requires that cash flow arising from Tax on operating profits should be classified as operating cash flow. And dividend tax, that is tax paid on dividends should be classified as financing activity. And capital gain tax on sale of fixed assets should be classified under investing activity. So this tax would be given if it is of investing, then you will take in the investing activity. If it is on our routine business, routine profit, then you will take in operating. But if it is, on a dividend, then it will go in the financing activity. So that take care we have to take non-cash transactions. Non-cash transactions are those transactions in which inflow or outflow of cash and cash equivalent does not take place. So many times in the question, you will be given some transaction in which there is no inflow, no outflow of cash. So they are the non-cash transaction. Some examples are given. Non-cash transactions are not considered in cash flow statement because we are finding cash inflows and cash outflows. So all those non-cash transactions are ignored here. Say for example, depreciation and amortization expense. In operating activity, we add them back because they are non-cash. Issue of bonus shares, that means free shares without charging any money from the shareholder, shares are issued free of cost. So there is no cash inflow. Acquisition of machinery by issue of equity share or debenture. That means issue of shares and debentures consideration other than cash. Machinery is purchased, but no cash is given. Payment is made by equity share and debenture. Redemption of debenture by issuing equity share. That means debentures are converted into equity share. So these are the sum of the example in which there is no inflow and no outflow of cash. So they are not considered in cash flow statement. Proposed dividend, final dividend, very important point, but very simple also. If in the question proposed dividend of previous year is given, then we will take it at two places. First, proposed dividend of previous year, we will take in finding net profit before tax. 
it will be added there and it will be shown as cash outflow in financing activity because proposed dividend of previous year be pay in the current year so first effect we will add in the npbt and second effect we will minus in the financing activity proposed dividend of current year we have not to touch it no effect of this because it is current year proposed dividend which will be paid in next year so there is no inflow no outflow this year so no effect is given for this this is a simple treatment of this once again proposed dividend of previous year to effect add in npbt and minus in financing activity assuming that dividend paid and proposed dividend of current year you have to ignore it you have not to touch it treatment of provision for tax it is also very simple tax paid in the current year is deducted in the operating activity in operating activity we minus it from the cash generated from operations now many time in the question they give us provision for tax of the previous year and current year and no other information is given then simply provision for tax of current year you have to add in npbt while finding net profit before tax and provision for tax of previous year you have to deduct from cash generated from operation assuming tax paid so provision for tax of previous year we will minus in operating activity as tax paid and provision for tax of current year we will add in the npbt this treatment we will do when no information is given only provision for tax of previous year and current year is only given but many a time they give us additional information sometimes they do not give us information about tax paid so in that case what we have to do if the amount of tax paid or provision for tax made during the current year is not given it can be calculated by preparing provision for tax account now this is a provision for tax account and it has credit balance so opening balance we will write on the credit side by balance brought down opening and if the closing balance is given then that will go to the debit side to balance carry down closing so this item will be given now if in the question tax paid is given then our entry would be provision for tax to bank so debit side we will write to bank tax paid so credit side you will get the difference and that this difference is the provision made during the current year by statement of profit and loss this provision we add in finding net profit before tax so this is also possible when some additional information is given along with the opening and closing balance at that time you have to prepare provision for tax account remember when you will prepare provision for tax account when tax paid is not given or when provision for current year is not given or when opening and closing balance are given and tax paid is also given then you will prepare this account to find provision made during the current year let us see some exercise on calculation of net profit or loss before tax and extraordinary items let us first revise this we have already taken earlier it begins with the surplus that is balance in the statement of profit and loss of current year that is closing balance minus surplus that is balance in the statement of profit and loss of previous year that is opening balance in that you have to add transfer to general reserve during the current year interim dividend paid during the current year proposed dividend paid during the year and that amount is of previous year because previous year dividend we paid in the current year in that we have to add provision for tax of the current year and if refund is given you minus so finally you will get net profit or loss before tax in extraordinary item this is our starting point of the cash flow statement some important points are given here important points to be remembered while finding net profit before tax 
an extraordinary item. First take surplus, that is difference between closing and opening balance of statement of profit and loss. In that add transfer to reserve. In that add provision for tax of the current year. In that add proposed dividend of previous year. So these are the important points. See this exercise. Calculate net profit before tax from the following information. Now here opening is 2018 and closing is 2019. First of all, we are given the surplus that is balance in the statement of profit and loss. General reserve is given. Opening is 40,000, closing is 50,000. That means in current year, we have made a reserve of 10,000. So difference 10,000 we have to take. Provision for tax. Opening 20, closing also 20. We have to take provision for tax of the current year, that is 20,000. Proposed dividend. Proposed dividend, 2018 is previous year, 2019 is current year. We have to take 15,000 proposed dividend of the previous year. Interim dividend paid is given and tax refund is given 12,000. Let us see the solution. First, closing profit minus opening profit, that means 1,50,000 minus 1 lakh, so you are getting 50,000. Then transfer to reserve, 10,000 will be added. Interim dividend, 18,000 added. Proposed dividend paid during the current year, that is 15,000. And this is the amount of previous year. In current year, we pay the amount of previous year. See the previous year dividend, 15,000. 15,000 is of previous year that we pay in the current year. So we have to add 15,000. Provision for tax of current year you have to take. You can see provision for tax of current year is 20,000. So that is taken here. Less tax refund is given 12,000. So finally you are getting 1,1,000. Like this is net profit before tax an extraordinary item. This is a simple case. Illustration number two, calculate net profit before tax from the following information. First, we are given the surplus in the statement of profit and loss. And you see in the current year, that means in 2019, loss is given 20,000. General reserve opening 20, closing 30. So 10,000 is addition during the year. Provision for tax opening 15, closing 20,000 we take provision for tax of the current year, 20,000. Proposed dividend, 10,000, 10,000 is given. We take proposed dividend of previous year, that is 10,000. Interim dividend, 8,000 is given. Here you have to take care because in closing loss is given 20,000. Let us see the solution. So first we have written balance in the statement of profit and loss, negative item, 20,000. From that, we have to minus balance in the statement of profit and loss that is a previous year that is given 1 lakh. 20,000 is minus, from that you will minus 1 lakh, so minus minus plus, so 1 lakh 20,000 is the total amount of loss. In that, you will add transfer to reserve 10,000, interim dividend given 8,000, you will add proposed dividend paid during the year, and this is the amount of previous year. Provision for tax of current year we take here. So finally you are getting net profit before tax in extraordinary item 72,000. If refund of tax is given, then that also we have to take. Here it is not given. So we have not subtracted. See the illustration number three, it is very important. Following is the extract of balance sheet of KBC Limited. 31st March 20 given and 31st March 19 given. So opening is 19 and 20 is closing. Surplus is given, closing is 8 lakh, opening is 5 lakh and dividend payable is given 30,000. That means this dividend is still outstanding to pay. Company has paid, but shareholders have not claimed. So it is still payable to them. Okay, dividend proposed for the year 31st March 19 and 20 is 3 lakh and 3 lakh 50,000 respectively. So it is a proposed dividend of previous year and current year is given. 
So you are given the proposed dividend of previous year and current year. So solution. First, we take the closing surplus. Eight lakh is given. That is of current year minus opening surplus. That is five lakh is given. So three lakh we will get. Now here, general reserve is not given. Provision for tax is not given. Only one item is given. Proposed dividend. So we will add proposed dividend, and we have to take care. We will add three lakh rupees because proposed dividend of previous year is three lakh. So three lakh will be added. So you are getting six lakh. That is your net profit before tax in extraordinary item. Now, dear student, why this exercise is important? When you will prepare financing activity, so in financing activity, dividend paid you will write only two lakh seventy thousand because here proposed dividend of previous year is three lakh. and out of that still 30000 is payable we have not paid because shareholders have not claimed so out of 3 lakh 30000 is still payable so only 2 lakh 70000 we paid company paid only 2 lakh 70000 so while you prepare when you prepare financing activity in that you will write dividend paid 2 lakh 70000 proposed dividend of previous year minus dividend payable so this is the importance of this dividend payable Dividend payable thirty thousand will not affect net profit before tax in extraordinary item. It will affect financing activity. Now let us see some exercise on cash flow from operating activities. Calculate cash flow from operating activities from the following information. Kisor Limited made a profit of fifty thousand. So ready made profit is given after transfer to general reserve rupees fifteen thousand. So already general reserve is deducted. Depreciation is ten thousand on asset. The goodwill is amortized three thousand five hundred. So these are the non-cash expense we add back. Gain on sale of machinery. So it is the non-operating item. It is a gain. So we will minus it. It is income. Other information available are trade receivable sold on increase fifteen hundred, increase in trade receivable that means increase in current asset, V minus, trade payable increase three thousand, increase in current liability V plus, prepared expense and increase hundred, and outstanding expense payable decrease one thousand. So working capital changes are also given, and we have to find cash flow from operating activities. So we very simple exercise. See the solution. First, we will take net profit before tax. How? Fifty thousand profit. In that, we will add transfer to general is of fifteen thousand. No other information is given. Only two items are given. So sixty-five thousand. In that, we will make the adjustment for non-cash and non-operating item. So depreciation is non-cash expense. We will add back goodwill amortized non-cash expense. We will add back gain on sale of machinery. It is a non-operating income. We will minus here. So finally, we are getting seventy-seven thousand. It is operating profit before working capital change. In that adjustment for the working capital changes will be made. Where you have to remember increase in current liability, we add. Decrease in current liability, we minus. Increase in current asset, we minus. And decrease in current asset, we plus. So these information is are given. So accordingly, they are plus and minus. Finally, your answer is net cash from operating activities. So very simple exercise is given here. Illustration number two. Profit for the year two thousand thirteen fourteen is rupees ten thousand after providing for depreciation. So depreciation is already subtracted here. So we will add it back. Okay, here thirty first March thirteen and thirty first March fourteen is given. So previous year is thirteen and current year is fourteen. Trade receivable. Opening fourteen, closing fifteen. So one thousand increase. V minus. Provision for doubtful debt one thousand and twelve hundred. Trade payable current liability thirteen thousand and fifteen thousand. Inventories current asset. 
5,000 and 8,000. So you have to compare whether it is increasing or decreasing. And you have to remember rule. If current liabilities increase, V plus. And if current liabilities decrease, V minus. If current asset increase, V minus. And if current asset decrease, V plus. Short term investments are given. Expenses payable. So it is a liability, current liability. Prepaid expense given. Accrued income given. This is current asset. Income received in advance. It is current liability. See the solution. Net profit before tax is 10,000. Ready made given. In that we will add depreciation and provision for doubtful debt. So finally we are getting operating profit before working capital change. And thereafter we have to make an adjustment for working capital change. Increase, decrease in the current asset and current liabilities. It is a very simple, you remember that four rules, you can easily decide. So finally you are getting net cash flow from operating activities. Let us see some exercise on investing activities. In investing activities, we take purchase and sale of fixed assets and purchase and sale of long-term investment. And also we take interest received and dividend received from this investment. So see, from the following information, calculate cash flow from investing activities. Interest received on debenture. That means we have invested in debenture and we received interest. So it is our inflow from investing activity. Dividend received 5,000. We have invested in the shares of another company. Interest paid on bank loan. Interest paid on bank loan 25,000. Dividend paid 7,500. Okay. Machinery purchase 2 lakh given, land purchase 5 lakh, goodwill, then trademark purchase 20,000, machinery sold 3 lakh, land sold 8 lakh, goodwill sold 25,000. So sale means cash inflow and purchase means cash outflow. And we are finding investing activity, interesting exercise. So cash flow from investing activity, first we are writing cash received from sale of machinery, cash received from sale of land and cash received from sale of goodwill. Three items are given in the question in the sold portion, 3 lakh, 8 lakh and 25,000. So 3 lakh, 8 lakh and 25,000. Thereafter cash payment to purchase machinery, cash payment to purchase land, cash payment to purchase trademark, three items are given, 2 lakh, 5 lakh and 20,000. In the question, it is given in the purchase portion. Then, Important point, interest received 10,000 we will add, dividend received we will add because it is on our investment. Very important point in this question, interest paid is given 25,000 that will not come, dividend paid 7,500 will not come. It will go in the financing activity, not in investing. In financing activity, we write interest paid and dividend paid. Right now we are preparing investing activity. So it will not come here. So finally, net cash inflow from investing activity, you can see here. Now see the exercise on cash flow from financing activities. And you know, in financing activities, we take all those items which affect the capital and borrowing, long-term borrowing of an organization. See the illustration. Wonderful illustration is given here. From the following information, calculate cash flow from financing activity. 31st March 19 and 31st March 20 is given. So opening is 31st March 19 and closing is 31st March 20. Equity share capital, opening is 15, closing is 20 lakh. That means 5 lakh equity share issued. This is cash inflow from the issue of equity shares, 5 lakh rupees. 12 percent is preference share capital opening is 5 lakh and closing is nil that means we redeem we repaid so it is outflow in financing activity 14 percent is debenture 
opening is nil but closing is 2 lakh 50000 that means current year we have issued debenture so it is cash inflow from the issue of debenture additional information are given equity share were issued at premium so we will receive premium amount also see we have issued equity shares of 5 lakh because difference is 5 lakh in equity share capital so 20% as of 5 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh will be the securities premium reserve that is received because shares are issued at premium so it is inflow 12 percent is preference shares were redeemed at par that means we have redeemed 5 lakh rupees only 14 percent is debenture were issued at discount so here debentures are issued at 10 percent is discount so actually we have not received 2 lakh 50 from that 10 percentage that means 25000 we will minus because discount amount we cut so actual cash inflow from the issue of debenture would be only 2 lakh 25000 2 lakh 50000 minus 25000 discount at the time of issue discount amount we do not receive interim dividend paid on equity share 1 lakh 50000 so dividend paid it is outflow interest paid on 14 percent is debenture 35000 it is also cash outflow of financing activity underwriting commission on issue of equity share it is cash outflow dividend paid on preference share 60000 it is cash outflow all outflow you minus and all inflow you have to plus so very so many informations are given here and it is a wonderful exercise so first cash flow from financing activity first all the plus items are taken proceed from the issue of equity share 5 lakh difference receipt of the security premium 20 percent is of 5 lakh 1 lakh proceed from the issue of 14 percent is dimension only 2 lakh 25 thousand will come because 10 percent is is discount so 25 thousand discount is given so only 2 lakh 25 thousand received so total received from the financing activity is 8 lakh 25 thousand from that minus all the cash outflow which are given in the exercise like underwriting commission paid redemption of preference share interim dividend paid dividend on the preference share 60000 and interest paid on debenture so finally we are getting 60000 rupees that is cash flow from financing activities so here i tried to cover all types of exercise similar type of uh, exercise is given in this you have to find cash flow from financing activity so see first interest paid is given on debenture 12500 so it is cash outflow interim dividend of rupees 75000 has been paid so it is also cash outflow 9% is debentures were redeemed at premium so you have to take care debentures are redeemed at premium Okay, opening date is given thirty first March fourteen, and closing date is given thirty first March fifteen. First point: equity share capital opening is ten lakh, closing is sixteen lakh. That means new shares issued of six lakh. It is inflow of six lakh. Nine percent is debenture. Opening is one lakh fifty, closing is one lakh. So we redeem debenture of fifty thousand, and they are redeemed at five percent is premium. So fifty percent a five percent is of fifty thousand. Five percent is of fifty thousand, so two thousand five hundred will be the premium. Proposed dividend. We take proposed dividend of the previous year, three lakh rupees paid. Ten percent is preference capital. Opening is two lakh, closing is three lakh. That means new preference shares are issued of one lakh rupees. This is inflow. Dividend is also given on the preference share, so accordingly we will count. See the solution. Proceed from the issue of equity share six lakh. It is given in the table first point ten and sixteen lakh difference six lakh. Proceed from issue of ten percent is preference share capital one lakh. See in the table last item is given two lakh and three lakh difference one lakh. Cash paid on redemption of nine percent is debenture fifty two thousand five hundred. How fifty two thousand five hundred? We redeem fifty thousand. Second point nine percent debenture, one lakh fifty and one lakh difference is fifty thousand paid, and they are paid at five percent is premium. So total amount paid fifty two thousand five hundred. 
इंटरेस्ट पेड ऑन डिबेंचर 12500 इट इज गिवन फर्स्ट पॉइंट हियर इंटरिम डिविडेंड पेड 75000 गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन सेकंड आइटम एंड फाइनल डिविडेंड पेड 3 लाख रुपीस 3 लाख रुपीस डिविडेंड इज गिवन that is proposed dividend of previous year that we pay in the current year so finally we are getting net cash flow from financing activity 260000 thank you very much from guru of accountancy myself kishor chohan and i will come with more such videos please subscribe my channel and like this video and share also thank you thank you very much